Okay, so welcome back to another section. Now, in this section, we'll be talking about pointers and dynamic memory allocation. Pointers are basically variables which are used to store the memory addresses of another variables, right? And dynamic memory allocation is basically assigning memory during runtime. So let's start with pointers in this tutorial, and I'll tell you about dynamic memory in the next one. So as I said, pointers are variables, so they are, can also be of the different types: int, char, float, double, etc. But we mostly use integer pointers because we don't really require others uh, so frequently. The syntax for a pointer is star followed by the name of the variable, right? So in star p basically means that p is going to be a pointer type of variable. Now you can't simply assign a normal value to a pointer variable because it needs addresses of another variable, right? So let's go ahead and make another integer say i is equal to ten, and now. What we'll do is we'll assign the address of i to p, right? So as you know, this is the ampersand, which is also referred to as the address of operator. Uh, so the address of i is assigned to p, right? So the value of p now holds the address of i. It will be more clear when we actually see what the output is. So we'll say the value of i is, and we'll display i here. And in the next line, what we'll do is we'll simply print the value of p is value of p is percentage d again since it is an integer, and we'll say p. Now p again is an a pointer variable. Let's take this to the next line, and or let's run this code and see what we get. This will make it absolutely clear as to what we are talking about here. So as you can see, the value of i is 10 here, but the value of p is uh, this huge number. Now this number is the memory address where the value of i is stored, right? So that is what a pointer is used to do. It is used to find out the address of the variables. Now the only place where we actually use pointers is data structures, uh, which has got nothing to do with this tutorial series. But since pointers is an advanced concept in C, I thought I might just tell you guys about it. So that is what the pointer actually is. It is used to store the address of another variables, and there is no limit. Uh, this is again a one-dimensional pointer. You can call it. This is a 2D pointer, which means that this pointer needs to store the address of another pointer. So Q will basically store the address of another pointer, something like that, right? So if you go ahead and display the value of Q now. Value of Q is we'll say Q and let's see what is the output which we get. So as you can see, you get the exact same uh, value. Now why is that? Because we did not assign the address of P to Q. We actually assigned only the uh, value, right? So uh, now let's remove the asterisk and now see what the output is. So there we go. The output changed, right? So that basically means that. P and Q are stored in subsequent memory locations because there is a difference of only four bytes. But again, Q is to now Q is storing the address of P and P is storing the address of I. So Q is basically a two-dimensional pointer if you uh, want to refer it that way. And again, there is no limit to this, so it can you can go on and on with it. But uh, again, as I said, pointers are used exclusively in case of data structures. So uh, you need not worry about them for now. You know what a pointer is. And that's good enough because people are very scared of pointers. To be honest, the programmers don't like pointers, and that is the reason that they have been removed in uh, the recent languages like Java, etc. There is no concept of pointers in Java, uh, but they do come in handy while using data structures. So if you go ahead and learn data structures in the near future, you might require pointers a lot. So that was all about pointers which you guys need to know. So thank you guys for watching. In the next video we will be talking about dynamic memory allocation. So I'll see you there.